What's up everybody, Tommy Har with The Real Side of Real Estate. Today we are back at the five properties and 12 vacant lots that we bought just six weeks ago. In this video, you're gonna be watching all of the progress, so make sure you go watch the video before. When we bought them, they all needed renovated. Two are already done, the third one is just about done, the fourth is gutted. I'm excited to show you all the progress, share some of the numbers, and talk about the actual exits and rents that we're getting in real time. Let's get it. So the first house we're at right here, this one actually got done second, but it was the first one to rent. So if we look over here, so the, the houses go in rows of here. So one, vacant lot, two, and then third house. We painted this siding over here. I love my blues and it was way too blue. So we had to kind of paint this one a same color. So we went with like a Cape Cod uh, type blue. So this house right here, like I said, it's been six weeks. We spent $51,400 on the renovation. So a decent sized renovation, six weeks. We did some mechanical systems, but mostly a full cosmetic rehab. Let's, uh, let's go in, let's talk, let's show it. I'm gonna go pretty quickly through these houses, but make sure you go back through the other video where Rob can even show you some B-roll of what it looked like, just to kind of show you how quickly renovations can move. So we got our AC installed right here, and everything that we're gonna be talking about was part of our 51 and some change renovation. We got our screened in area. So you'll watch the other video and you'll hear all the things I was saying, some of the visions coming to life. That's one of my favorite parts of real estate is being able to be creative and make spaces that were so disgusting into something functional. So this before reeked of cat piss, like horribly. And now you've got a great space to entertain. You got a hangout space. If you're a smoker, you can smoke. You can play a little beer pong right here, you know what I'm saying? That's, uh, that's what we would do with it, but it cleaned up beautifully. And everything matches as always. We got black doors, black handles. This one's locked. We'll go back into the front. <clears throat> this place, we had a bunch of issues with bad valleys and roof leaks. So a lot of the flashings needed redone. Um, uh, a couple issues we ran into, our cabinet guy, when they delivered it, they nailed the, the corner of the house. So they paid for new gutters. And um, I'll show you guys what this looks like. So just visualize all this, this is all brand new. We reused the trim, but we got brand new LVP floors, we got new light fixtures, we redid some of the drywall, uh, $51,000, everything that we did. Bedroom number one, Just a nice cleanup job, nothing too crazy. Paint, floors, reuse the doors. Actually, I think these doors are new. Um, but no, reuse, reuse that one. We replaced that one. But we won't even go in there, there's not a lot to show. But before, there was an island right here, this place was destroyed. This is what our typical base hit or uh, builder grade flip is gonna look like. So we talked to our granite person, they had this black left over, so this was what they call a shard. So we got this piece here, probably what, eight feet, 10 feet for cheaper than what we would get our regular stuff because they used this on a big job and this is what was left over. So every time I'm talking to my granite guys and I have a smaller job or a cheaper job, what do you have that's left over for me? And what can I get a deal on? Because sometimes you can get upgraded granite or quartz for a fraction of the price of what it'd be before because they want to monetize it as much as they possibly can too. Brand new appliances. So this appliance package right here costs us $2,800 here in Columbus, Ohio. That's our stainless steel range, or stainless steel fridge, dishwasher, range microwave. And then we got our subway tile all the way across with our frost grout. This kitchen is pretty damn beautiful. And then right here, we gutted this bathroom, A to Z, all the way down to the studs, new tub, new tile, new vanity, new floors, everything. And one thing that you'll notice in all of our rehabs is there's one light fixture. This, especially on rentals, this turns on the light and our exhaust fan because when people are using these showers and you own the house, a lot of times they will not turn on their exhaust fan and that'll cause mold, mildew, all that stuff to build up. Um, real quick, I don't even know if we wanna go downstairs. Actually, let's do this real quick because in the last video, I think we shot down here. Not this one. Okay. Not this one. Yeah. But these basements, when you get, into, I think this place was built in the 30s. 
These basements can be really scary, they can be ugly. This is what you wanna see when you're fixing and flipping or even going to rent houses like this, you know? This, these basements can be nasty. So we clean it up, we patch some of the concrete, we paint it, we paint the ceilings, it hides imperfections, it hides any uh, nasty stuff, and it's a space that you can store and actually feel like you have an extra space in your house. We have a brand new furnace. So our furnace and AC package usually costs us right around 5,500 uh, 5, bucks. And that's about all I wanna show you guys downstairs. I don't wanna make this video insanely long. But like I said, we'll go up, show you the upstairs here. But we put the other one up for rent. That's a 3-1. This is technically a 3-1 with the upstairs. We put that one up for 1,800. And it's been somewhat slow, so I popped this one up for 1500 and it got rented like that. So I know the other one next door, different style house, but this one will probably, that one will probably rent for 1600 1700 at the end of the day. Because this third bedroom up here is more for an office space, kids room. It's a little hotter because you got, I mean, it's an attic space, so a little less functional but did a lot of drywall work up here and made this thing a nice space. I mean, if somebody has kids, this is a great kids area. I mean, it's a pretty big space, a lot of storage. It's, uh, it's good to go. So this one's a great rental, but maybe not a, a great flip because it's a little bit wonky. Um, the bathroom's through the kitchen. You gotta always be thinking of that stuff, but as a rental, it's fine. Got me out of breath over here. Cool. So that is the end of number one. So we bought the whole package for 420,000. We're 50 grand into the renovation with this house. So let's call it 475,000. We're not talking about interest. Right now, this is cash flowing. They move in next week, $1,500. Boom, we're collecting money. Let's go to the next house and let's do the same thing. Walking over to the next house here, Rob behind the camera called it Big Blue. So this house now is Big Blue. One thing you want to notice that, and also do when you have houses that are on well and septic, which these all are, this is a rural area, but in the city, it's really weird. So these are all have private sewer systems. So right here is one of our septics. So what we did is right away, I want to know the big ticket items and what we're going to incur. So we had somebody come and locate all of our septic tanks right away and pump them. Cause I need to know if they're damaged. Cause if they're damaged, I need to repair them. And if I have to replace them, we're talking 15 to 20 grand a pop. So I needed to know that right away because that right there, if all five were bad, that's a hundred grand. I blow my deal. I mean, all my equity is gone right there. So that's what these uh, concrete posts are, not posts, slabs. So we got big blue right here. If you saw the video before, this is a three bed, one bath. This was the best condition of all of them. Let me go find the lock box and we will go to the inside we are inside of big blue here this one we spent thirty thousand dollars on rehab so we're all in now five hundred and five thousand dollars not including interest to my private money lenders and this so we went through the back door this is our kitchen so we dropped the ceilings they were nasty drop ceilings re-drywall did some plumbing work and uh did a whole new kitchen here so this was a very, very old, like 40s, 50s kitchen. Once again, you're gonna see the same thing in all of these rehabs. We've got our shaker cabinets, usually not black granite, but once again, we had shards left over, not the same as the one there, because there's only enough for that one. So we got a good deal from our granite guys here. We had to reconfigure some of this space, but nice functional kitchen for um, somebody to come and move into. And one thing you'll notice if you watched the video before, we didn't paint the trim. We also didn't replace the wood windows because they're actually in pretty good shape and they all function. Now, they're gonna be a little less high efficient, but sometimes you don't have to go overkill with these things, especially on a rental. We also didn't even touch the wood floors. The wood floors were here like this. Immediately we covered them because they're in great shape. I mean, these things are original, they're beautiful, and we kept all the original woodwork to match it. So really all we did here, if you, don't, if you have my deal analyzer, is a uh, drywall punch, new kitchen, new bathroom. We did some HVAC work and got this thing ready to go. Exterior paint as well. So we got our light fixtures. So if you guys want my material list with all of these things in it, it'll be in the show notes too. 
you, you have access to all of these things. Everything we use in our rehab, they're right there. But hardwood floors, and I'm really actually kind of shocked that thing hasn't gone for rent for 1800 because it's a pretty big space. If it was a three one and a half or a three two, it would definitely have gone. Okay, we got our upstairs landing. We had in these bedrooms, original pine floors that we kept. Anytime I can re keep hardwood and it looks like this, I'm gonna try it every single time because it's durable, it looks beautiful, and it's functional. It'll last forever too. So like I said, 30 grand on this one, LVP up here on the landings. We painted, we did right here a full bath renovation. So once again, we got our subway tile. We kept the tub so you can keep these things. We kept the vanity and dropped the granite from the other house on top of it. And honestly, we should have replaced these hinges. That's something that we're probably gonna, I'm gonna say to my contractors once we leave here, because that's to me pretty lazy. <clears throat> but this house here, once again, 30 grand, so we're all in 505. This should rent here in the next couple days to a week for 16 to $1,700. So let's assume that we're all in rent wise after these two houses, $3,200. So $3,200 of income, we're all in 505. Let's go to the next house. And as for the outside of this one, like I said, we spent 30 grand. We did exterior paint and we pressure washed and painted the deck. So all of those things we talked about, $30,000. This will happen in rehabbing, you know, you'll, you'll start, you'll pick out a color online and you think it's good from the swatch that you grabbed and then you paint it and it won't look like what you thought it was going to look like. So I love blue, but this to me is a little bit too blue, but they were already done with the first coat by the time that we were like, we don't like that color. So sometimes you got to really be, up, be sure up front or get some swatches, paint it a little bit and then choose. But this is what we had in our deal, in our, not our deal analyzer, our material list that we use and we had it written down wrong, so we fucked up on this one. And I'm not um, scared to admit when we mess up, but it's clean, it's painted well, the soffits are white, it still actually looks pretty decent. So we got a vacant lot right here that we own, and then we've got our third house, which might be one of my favorites. This is a great house, it's got a lot of cool amenities. I've not been back here since we shot the first time, and uh, I know this one was a little bit slower because they were working on a French drain so French drain here, I think this might be the, somebody cut it, but you got our drain. So we, we waterproof this basement. We're about 20 grand into this rehab and we're gonna spend 40. So that's our budget on this. Exterior wise, we're not really doing much at all. The aluminum siding's in great shape. We got our dumpsters here, our guys are working. It's funny, cause when we bring the camera around, uh, my guys, they, they hate the camera. So they're gonna probably scram, but we'll see how it goes. Looks like we cut out a bunch of nice landscape. So we own this house here and that house there, and that's where we're working our way around to. All right. Hi. What's up, boss? Hi. How are you? Hi, what are you? These houses look great. Yeah. What's up? You guys yeah. eating lunch? Yeah, yeah, eating lunch. <laughs> All right. What's up, guys? I need my boss. Tom. George. George? Yeah. Nice to meet you. Tom. <laughs> Nice to meet you. I know we've met before. What's up, man? How are you? All right. Okay. So I've not been back here yet. I knew the cabinets had been uh, delivered. And this one's a little quirky. So we fully renovated those ones. And I knew these were going to be rentals. So I made the decision. And I am keep going back and forth myself. Do we keep the wood paneling? Do we not? We are keeping the drop ceilings because they're not in that bad a condition. We'll see if it bites our, us in the ass when it comes to um, leasing this thing. Maybe at the end we'll end up painting the paneling as well. But here we had a quirky little kitchen. We've turned it into a nice functional one. We kept the overheads here, which we're gonna paint. Actually, we're gonna keep those. Oh no, they sanded them down. So we're painting those white to match to have some extra storage. And then we've got our nice kitchen. So same thing, dishwasher and our bathroom. So this one's in the middle of renovation. And as you can see, I'm stepping over things. Me, when I'm, when I'm trying to manage my rehabs, I really, really, really would like to see things cleaner. So broom swept. If it's in the middle of the day, it might be okay. But at the end of the day, they need to have this moved so you can kind of feel like things are getting done more. But 
Once again, boring subway tile, lasts forever. We dropped granite on this vanity, so it had a big, weird vanity here, and we didn't want to switch it out, so we're gonna paint that stuff, and we dropped granite. Once again, a shard. 20 grand into this one. We ran into some issues on this one as well when we were removing, so this one had a one bedroom here. It looks like it's not done yet too. So when there was a wall right here and these were the only bedrooms. So you had to walk through this bedroom to get to this one. And I told the guys, hey, let's, let's remove the wall and let's piece in the hardwood because it's hardwood throughout the entire house. And it's turned into a bigger job than what I imagined. I would have probably just either did carpet or LVP the entire thing, but that's kind of how it goes, you know? So we did a new beam. So where the wall was, we did a faux beam to not have to find new pieces of the drop ceiling. Drywalled all of this. So now you got a just big, big first floor bedroom that uh, once it's done, it'll look great. But this one's been going a little bit slower than I would like because this crew, really they can only do one to two projects at a time. We kind of threw it all at them because they're all in a row. So I'm a little bit more lenient on them, but within a week, they should be done with this thing in about a week, week and a half, two weeks. So I'm gonna be kind of on my team's ass and their ass to, to get it done. And then you got all of this paint. So maybe we are painting this, this stuff because, or it's for everything, <laughs> it's a shitload of paint. I was like, what do we have all this paint for? Uh, fuck. <laughs> There's a lot of paint. This has got to be for, all right, we're probably painting this paneling because this is outrageous. I mean, that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 40. No, that's, that's absolutely ridiculous. What the fuck is that? <laughs> uh, that's where all my money's at. It's in this paint. They're restoring paint at this house. We got our entryway, which we didn't do a whole lot with. And now this was the downstairs that I was excited about. I knew that we had to turn this into a one bed, but a one bed, one bath is not gonna rent for that much. So what we did is we turned this, we French drained this, so we did a drainage system around the perimeter. So we waterproofed it, and now we've got this, I mean, we doubled the square footage of the house. It smells great down here, actually, it's wild. We doubled the square footage and added a bedroom down here. So right here, you've got a bedroom, somebody's definitely gonna use, and then you got a closet with your sump pump. So the drain comes in around the exterior, drops into this pit, shoots it up and out. So that right there, I think cost us nine grand to do that. But it allows us to double the square footage of this basement area, or the, the home rather, and probably get $500, $600 more of rental value. So now, this one will probably rent for $1,600, $1,800 because it's got that massive garage. My demo crew, one of them, he hit me up and said, hey, I would like to use this as my, um, as my office. What do you think of that? So they're gonna use that, and I assumed he was gonna sublease this to one of his workers. So if you're in those scenarios, I may do it, but whoever lives in the house still has to go through my system. So they still have to be vetted by me. I'm not just gonna rent to the company and let him do whatever with it. They still have to be vetted by me and my company as well. So if you're doing management, property management, make sure you don't just allow anybody to put anybody in because once that person subleases it to somebody else and, the, and problems can happen, you're, gonna, you're in a world of hurt. And then back here, we've got our mechanical systems, so all new drywall, and you can see where we cut this French drain out. So they got the waterproofing, and this back here at the end will be sprayed black, the, uh, the floor is gray, all that stuff will be um, finished up. So the ARV on the first three houses here are probably about the same. There's a 3-1 that just sold uh, in, back in September, so a little less than a year ago. For 200 grand, there's one 2-1 on the market for 180 right now. So it'll probably all be valued right between 180 to 200. So we're looking at 600 grand of ARV between those three houses alone. And we're all in the three houses, 505 now plus 40 grand. What's 40 grand? So let's say we're all in 550 to this entire project. Let's go to the next. Now we're heading back to the last two houses. This house right here is occupied. It's a one bed, one bath, and we're probably not gonna get in for a while. His lease is until the end of August. I'm shooting this August 1st. Uh, if it's destroyed on the inside and we go in there, I don't think it's that bad, but we might just keep him in there. Just it's income, it's guaranteed. I think he pays only like 500 a month. 
So it depends. We're going to do a cost analysis. Is it worth pay, like getting them out, spending the money versus just keeping them in and keeping that income coming in? I didn't even realize we cleaned up all of this debris. Yeah, I mean, this, the, the garage looks amazing. That thing is huge. Absolutely huge. Power washed, everything. Now, we're at our fourth house right here. This one was beat up. This one we were talking about floor plan changes. I've not been here. I was looking at pictures yesterday. I think we made a massive, massive change in this thing. Brand new windows all the way through. So vinyl siding, brand new vinyl windows. Let's just go in and check it out. Oh, wow. So we got drywall hung. So this back area, these windows were all covered before. So now the, the, these houses are quirky, but they have a lot of really cool amenities to them like nice screened in areas, nice yards, all that stuff. I'm gonna go downstairs first and show you guys some of the big things that we've spent on this one. So our budget for this house is 65 grand or so. A lot of it is in the extra. So a lot of framing, mechanicals, concrete work, all that good stuff. So here as we walk down, you know it's a good sign when you got you know it's a good time when you got the Modellos right next to the electrical panel. You know the electric's good work, right? So that's what happens when you're in construction. You got just, it looks like a bomb of Modellos and beers go off in every house. But if you're doing good work and the guys tr are trustworthy, I don't care if they drink on site as long as it doesn't become a problem. Back here, if you remember the first video, this area was all dirt and it was lowered and it had this huge old furnace. So what we did is we came and we ripped the furnace out and we, and we poured brand new concrete here so we could set this furnace on it and we installed a perimeter drain in there just because it was already dirt floor. So all we had to do is drop a drain, drop our concrete, and now we've got a fully functional basement. So you can store stuff down here. Um, it still needs painted and cleaned, but massive, massive upgrade from where it was. And some of those things you have to do, sometimes you don't. But if you want to get top value, top rent value, and ARV, this looks great on a uh, piece of paper, giving it to an appraiser saying, hey, we did all of these things. And when I go to these appraisers, we are going to spend 65 on this house. I'm going to tell them we spent 100, right? So you want to tell them, because I'm getting investor prices. Some of you watching this video might think, you did all this for 65? Yeah, because we have great relationships. All right. Now the fun stuff. So all new drywall. This house we reconfigured uh, quite a bit actually. So back door leading into the house. This looks, man, good. We still got, uh, so we moved our washer and dryer to right here. So our washer and dryer is here. They just haven't stubbed the plumbing in yet or at least cut out the holes. Our kitchen is here. So our kitchen will be here. Um, our fridge is here or our range is here. I can't remember the exact layout, but I remember before it was destroyed. And then the big stuff, hey, how's it going? Before when you came in, there was a wall right here. There was a door right here. And you walked into one really, really small bedroom. What we ended up doing was making this shotgun style back. So we, we, we LVL'd this wall here, so you'll see, you'll see this, this here. We ran a load bearing beam all the way across to be able to open this up. So now we've got a much bigger, more functional bedroom here. So we'll run, our closet will still be here. And now you've got a space that you can actually have an adult live in, right? So you put a bed back there or a bed right here or something. It's still not perfect, right? But it's, it's, it's going to work. What I would do is I'd put my blinds up, I'd put a bed against this wall and have that as my, my, uh, my casual space. But it's better than what we had. And once again, this is a rental. Somebody is going to rent this place. But we needed to do these big ticket items. Um, next. We'll go upstairs here in a second. I don't want to get in their way because they're rocking and rolling. We had, this was open. And we ended up just framing it back out. We have our bathroom that is not done yet. 
Typically before you get to drywall, you wanna have your mechanicals done. So they're not doing new drywall in here yet. So we don't have our tub, we don't have our new fixture set in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stub, I think right there is where the, so right here is where our wash and dryer is gonna go or right behind here. We're just gonna stub it in, open it up and pop it in through the basement. So nothing much to say here. Honestly, I'm not sure why they didn't do that. Sometimes these guys do whatever they want. And then we'll go upstairs real quick, maybe. I don't wanna get in their way. Nah, we won't get in their way. So they're upstairs doing drywall. I don't wanna bother these guys. So this house here, we are, like I said, six weeks in. We didn't start this one for uh, three or four weeks. Let's go outside. I'm gonna show you a few more things that we've done. Another cool thing about being really organized in this business is I can pull up my tracker and tell you how much I spent on this rehab right now. And if you guys are part of the real side community, you get all of my trackers and everything as part of the uh, community. So I got Helen here. As of today, we've spent $27,310.33. Now that's gonna be, I don't know if we paid windows yet. Let's see if we've paid for windows. Um, we have not, we've not paid it. So it got installed, it gets paid probably tomorrow. Today's Thursday, that'll get paid for a Friday pay. What we've also done, and all of this will get, all this soffit work will get painted, these, these posts will get painted. We are going to, or we already did install a brand new dimensional shingled roof. So for $27,000 in this house, we've done roofing. We haven't paid for windows yet, it's probably gonna be four grand. Um, so let's say we're 30 in. So roof, windows, framing, electrical, concrete, furnace, and insulation on, on some walls and drywall. So we've done a lot of stuff on this house for only 30 grand. So uh, it, it's, it's really good progress. I like to see stuff like that. And uh, that is house number four. Okay, to sum this entire project up, where we're at today and even at the exit, here's what it's gonna look like. So last house we walked through was another 1,600, let's say, let's say another $1,600 in rent. So before we were at 3,200 on the first house, I'm gonna get my calculator out because now we're starting to talk and I'm gonna get a little confused. 3,200 plus 1,600. This house right here will most likely rent for, let's call it 1,400. And that one's already renting for, I think 500. So we're collecting $6,700 total in rent. We bought this for 420,000. This house here, we're gonna spend 65 in rehab. The one before it, we're gonna spend 40. The one before that we spent 30, and then the one on the end we spent 50. So we're all in $605,000, and the ARVs on this properties are going to be, so we're already one, per, so let me, let me clear my thoughts here. So we're already hitting the 1% rule. So we're all in $605,000. We're already getting 1% of all in with our rents. Now we could get that vacant and probably rent it for $1,100 or, $1, or so, maybe a thousand, that's great. But this house here will be worth, let's call it 175. The one before, one, uh, I would say 200, because you got the garage. The other one before 200, plus the one before 185, plus, let's say that one right there is worth 100 as is. So. Right now, without calculating all of this land, the ARVs on these are $860,000. Now we have 12 vacant plots of land, and I know for a fact they're at least worth $10,000 a pop. So let's add another 120,000 to that. So our ARV on this entire project, as after these are finished and we leave that one as is, $980,000. We're all in 605 when it's all said and done, times 0.75 is $735,000. So that gives us $110,000, or what, what was the number? $120,000, $130,000 of equity to play with for private money, doing extra rehabs, all that stuff. So this is a scenario where we might be able to cash out a decent amount of money if we do this right. Or we can lever down and cash flow more. So you gotta figure out what you want and what your needs are. But for me, 
whenever there's a scenario where I can maybe pay a little bit more monthly, but pull out ex uh, an excessive amount of cash tax-free, I'm taking that all day because you have to look at, can I take that cash and produce more cash flow with that money instead of monthly extra cash flow here? So hopefully you guys like this video. This is a really, really cool deal. I will do this one more time when it's all finished and actually do a financial breakdown with our loan that we're gonna get on the back end. So I'll show you real numbers, real documents, all of that stuff. But until then, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you follow here. Make sure you follow my Instagram. And if you guys wanna learn stuff like this, there's no better place than the Real Side of Real Estate community. People are learning and growing every single day. Appreciate you being here.